So I want to invite Jeremiah forward, please, as he reads, leads us in our scripture reading for today. It comes from the book of 1 Timothy. You're welcome to follow along on the screen or in your own Bible as well. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 11 through 16. Command these things, teach them. Don't let anyone look down on you because you are young. Instead, set an example for the believers through your speech, behavior, love, faith, and by being sexually pure. Until I arrive, pay attention to the to public reading, preaching, and teaching. Don't neglect the spiritual gift in you that was given through prophecy when the elders laid hands on you. Practice these things and live by them so that your progress will be visible to all. Focus on working on your own development and on your on what you teach. If you do this, you will save yourself and those who hear you. To God. But you to God. Thanks be to God. Good morning. Uh, my name is Ryan Up. Um, I am part of the youth group here at Campbell United Methodist Church. Um, I've been born and raised here at Campbell. Uh, my mom was a children's director for a very long time, and I'm obviously very involved in the youth group, so I kind of like this place. Um, a little bit about me is I am 15 years old. Um, I go to Kickapoo High School, and I really like baseball. Go Cardinals. Um, <laughs> I'm also a big Seattle Seahawks fan, um, to give you insight to what I'm doing this afternoon. Um, and uh, again, I am 15 years old, so, and as far as I know, I'm the youngest person to give a sermon on Youth Sunday, so no pressure at all. Um, so when I read the scripture when writing my sermon, and I read the word gifts, I immediately thought of athletes, since they obviously have a talent for throwing a ball very well, or running very fast, or being able to catch a ball very well, et cetera, et cetera. And the player I thought of was Russell Wilson, quarterback for the Seahawks. And that is personal bias, because they're my favorite team, but it's true. He gets paid millions of dollars to play with a ball, and then in post-game interviews, he always gives the credit to God. So that's a good example of people using their gifts to change lives, right? Kind of. I mean... I have no personal connection to Russell Wilson as much as I want to, and I don't know many people that would believe in God because their favorite athlete does. Um, so how do we make a difference with our gifts? Well, I've said gifts a couple of times. What, what does gifts mean? Maybe, just maybe gifts is what separates you from the person you're sitting next to. You could live the same lives, eat the same foods, have the same hobbies, but you can mean two different things to someone. Maybe your gifts are why people are around you, or maybe gifts is just your personality. I had a baseball coach when I was 12 years old. We'll call him Coach Cole. Um, he was no older, Coach Cole was no older than 26 years old, and he taught me a lot about life. Uh, no offense, Mom and Dad. Um, he coached a group of annoying 12-year-olds under a harsh baseball organization, rules and pay. And he could have, well, no, he should have just quit and walked away but, and moved on. But he stayed, and because he stayed, he changed my, mo my, life, my life from that moment on. Um, he taught me many things. He taught me how to play baseball, go figure. But he also taught me how to be vulnerable, how to grow with those around you, but also how to love what you're doing and those around you. And Coach Cole is no older than 26. So what's Coach Cole's talent or gift? I'd say it's his personality. Coach Cole's personality changed my life, and he probably doesn't even realize it. To him, he was just a baseball coach in Missouri, coaching a bunch of 12-year-olds. And imagine if we try and change lives and try and make a difference to other people with our gifts that God gave us. That's what Timothy did in the scripture. He was told to use his preaching gifts. 17-year-old Timothy stood up to the challenge, and the rest is history, quite literally. He has two books in the Bible. I'm 15. 
I don't really know what my gift is. And I thought it was playing baseball, but God told me I was going to change lives if I did something else. And honestly, I don't think I need to know what my gift is right now. As long as I'm being myself, in a way, I am doing God's work, and so are you. If you just be yourself and glorify God, you're setting a really good example to those who believe. I mentioned Timothy 1. Timothy 1 is about Paul getting Timothy to stay in the city of Ephesus. Paul needs Timothy to stay there because the people of Ephesus don't really like that Jesus guy. And Timothy doesn't want to go there. He wants to run away. He doesn't want to preach there because he's afraid that the elders are going to look down on him because he's young. Um, he questioned his own calling, his talents, God, and asked himself, why would God want me to do such a difficult task? The book of Timothy 1 is Paul giving Timothy reasons to stay in Ephesus, to have hope in the people there, and because Timothy needs to stay there. Paul had just gotten out of prison, um, and the easy way out for Timothy would have been to tag along with Paul, to forget about Ephesus. But Paul had visited the city many times in the past, and he got booed and shunned, so he couldn't go to Ephesus himself. So he needed Timothy there. So Paul gave Timothy about six reasons why he needed to stay there. I'm not going to go through them all, but if you're interested, I highly encourage this book of the Bible. But those reasons mainly consisted of he can, he can and needs to make a difference in Ephesus because the Ephesians need him. What he was teaching them had taken a lot for them to, the Ephesians to grasp. It was important that they knew Jesus. Timothy had every reason to give up, go home with Paul, and stay away from Ephesus. And I feel like we've all been in situations like this. Knowing what you should do, knowing what you need to do is right, but it's not what you want to do. But